The S-Dog Gallery is a doll house size miniature gallery. Uh, it was started about four years ago and I had always wanted a dollhouse as a child and could never have one so I uh, reinvented my own dollhouse and turned it into a gallery. The dollhouse exists physically in my dining room. The reason that I asked Charlotte um, if she would be interested in a show is because I had seen a lot of her um, drawings and I also have a love for animals and I'm just amazed how she can make each animal each have its own character. And then when she started suggesting these um, 3D printed sculptures, that yeah, that definitely took SDOT to a new level for this month. And I was thinking, okay, so here's this space and it's there's a specific scale. Life's too short to take it too seriously. So I thought, well, why not I just have my favorite animal trash in the joint? But I wanted to focus on the energy that would happen if real scale zebras came crashing through um, a space. They also are very uh, empathetic in their faces. They have very human-like faces, but they are modeled after the zebras from the Columbus Zoo. So the fun part is the zebras at the, at the Columbus Zoo, they each, there's one that's very, very calm and very peaceful. And then there's these two that are always, they are always fighting. They're just kicking each other. They're always just antagonizing one another. It's like everything will be calm and then one will just, poof, you know, take and just take its back leg and just punch its, you know, its sister right in its ribs. They're just sassy. Some of them are just hilariously sassy. <laughs> I always use pens and markers because I can't erase. So I have to commit to that line and then move on. So the, the stripes are the most interesting part of the zebra because there's this one stripe that always goes around its belly like a belt. So that means when you hit that boundary line, all of these stripes curve towards, they go, they go almost horizontal across the derriere. A lot of people make the mistake of drawing the stripes on the the derriere vertical as opposed to horizontal. And then it has almost like army pipes on its, on its shoulder. And then it's difficult to see, but on their head, they have almost like an egg whisk shape. So they have a little stem in the front, and then it flares out over their brow. And they also have little black tufts back here. Then those, I'll take them back as reference and start to think about, because obviously, you know, the zebra has very specific anatomical elements and I've exaggerated them. So it's got the little cute eyes and the, the big schnoz to make it even more animated. So it's a, it's a caricature of the, of the creature. They're brought into a 3D program and they're modeled in, um, in polygons. So I work in Autodesk Maya and Photoshop. So this is the initial start of the, of the model. You can see it's hollow, so it's only half. It's only half of the model because the nice thing about these programs, they can, they can mirror things for you. The nice thing about 3D is that the, the process involves uh, the same thing that you would do if you took chicken wire and paper mache. So it's a very faceted um, program. It looks almost like as if you're cutting into, you're beginning to do a sculpture, a stone sculpture. Well, I want there to be a herd. I want to have enough that there is the sense that they're all individuals. You can put basically a human hand inside of it. So that way you can begin to, you can pose them pretty quickly. So that I'll be using a lot of those tools and a lot of invisible manipulators on top of these things. Like you can manipulate this pose a little bit more. So you can pick the head and you can manipulate just the head a little bit. So if you need to give it a little bit more of an inquisitive look or whatever, you can grab this stuff and actually, it's very malleable. It's very malleable. <laughs> and right now I'm painting stripes. 
lots of stripes. And this is why I'm very excited about printing in 3D full color because I won't, I'll only have to paint these stripes once. And then I can modify them and then the printer can print them. The printers that I have access to are extrusion printers. So they print out a little thin thread of filament and they, they build up the, the model. It's a solid color. So, and the fun part is, if you did cut the zebra in half, the stripes go all the way through. You know, how, how are they gonna be running through and maintaining the illusion that they're active in the, in the environment? That was the first thing when I first came in, it was all empty and I was like, ooh, I was like, oh my gosh, it's completely empty. But as we started, you know, Stephanie started bringing out all the, just all this neat stuff and then putting them in there and trying to get them to interact is just great. And then there's the Stephanie zebra. So they set the entire environment. They have furniture, they have tiny props, they can have receptions. We're gonna pick modern furniture for them to destroy going through the, the gallery space, of course, because they're zebras. And of course, modern furniture and zebras, I mean, that's like a no-brainer. I think for the artists, a lot of them are surprised how difficult it is to work in miniature, um, but they also have a freedom because there are no rules in SDOT Gallery, so they can do and make um, you know, whatever they want. So this is a brand new process for me in terms of making 3D print. I really had no idea what I was doing, which was great. So now I can make these, mod I can make these objects in my computer, I can sculpt virtually and then they actually turn into a 3D object, which is just, it's amazingly enchanting. I'm, I'm an educator by trade and I do that full time, but my other full time job is having fun.